this is my Bible it is the Word of God it has the power to change my life and to give me an inheritance amongst the saints I'm not a hearer only but I'm a doer of the word hallelujah will you please take your seat in the presence of the Lord amen and you are welcome to the house of the Lord and those of you watching me by television you are welcome and uh, I believe that these few minutes we are going to spend together your life will never be the same as the month of July and this service is designed with you in mind to equip you and establish you like never before July for us in Perez Chapel is a month where we equip our youth we prepare our youth for leadership and so it's a month where we have, we meet with our campus ministries, we meet with, uh, you know, our youth, we have our youth camp, etc. So it's a, it's, it's a month that is very special to me because we want, it's a month when we seed the youth for the future. And so if you're a parent, you want to invite your children to be part of the service, you want to open your spirit because there are building blocks we are putting that would help build our lives and the future. Now, last week, So we started a message I titled Building a Future After COVID-19. And we looked at, we, we ended up saying that wealth is not everything. 
And we saw Jesus saying in Mark 8 36, for what profit doesn't make uh, what doesn't profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And in Luke 12, 15, he said, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for your life does not consist in the abundance of things you possess. And I look we talked about the fact that when you get wealth dishonestly, when you get wealth dishonestly, you don't enjoy it. In Jeremiah 17, 11, it says, As the partridge sits on eggs and hatches them not, so he who gets riches and not by right will leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end he shall be a fool. You would ask me, Bishop, does it mean that wealth is bad? Not at all. Because the Bible has nothing good to say about poverty. It is not wrong to be poor, but it's wrong to stay poor. And when we say somebody is poor, we mean he lacks sufficient money or he's living below a level considered comfortable in society. And in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 15, the Bible says the wealth of the rich is their fortress. The poverty of the poor is their destruction. So what destroys the poor man is not just his lack of faith but in poverty. There are many poor people who have died when they could have lived because they couldn't go for the surgery they needed. Some of them are in jail because they couldn't have a lawyer. And they came against somebody who was powerful and rich. And so they were destroyed by their poverty. Poverty also demeans. Proverbs 19.4 Proverbs 19 says, Wealth makes many friends. The, the King James says, The poor is separated from his neighbor. The new King James says, Poverty drives your, your neighbors away. Or your friends away. If you keep going to your friend's house to eat, because you are poor, very soon when you start coming, they'll say that they are not in. Poverty reduces your influence. And in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 13 to 16, the, the Bible talks about a city that was besieged by another city. And nobody could deliver it except a poor wise man. And after delivering the city on the day of remembrance, the Bible says 
nobody remembered that poor wise man. And so Solomon concluded that wisdom is good, yet the poor man's wisdom is despised. And his words are not appreciated. That is the reason why if you don't have money you can't win an election in this country you can't win a parliamentary election because in the days when in elections we are giving bicycles and giving things like that and oh dollars and things and, and you, you are a sofa man you win that is why you must believe God to get wealth. Poverty produces slavery. In Proverbs 22 verse 7, it says, just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. The rich rule the poor. You don't want that to happen to you. Now if you are going to be a young man or woman who is a man of integrity, then you have to learn to pay your debts. So in Psalm 37 verse 21, it says the wicked borrow and never repays. But the godly are generous givers. Today I'm talking on building with the institutions. Building with the institutions. That's part two. So you've got to learn to pay your debts. And if you are going to pay your debts, you have to learn that you don't chop all the money you get. You have to learn to invest. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20, the New Living Translation says, The wise have wealth and luxury. But fools spend whatever they get. No matter how much you earn, you have to learn to save some. It is only a fool who chops everything he gets. The truth of the matter is, no matter how much you earn, it will once you start earning it, it will not satisfy you after a while. So as a small, still save. I remember. Uh, in, in class four, when my dad took me from Wager Barracks to Amphos Experimental in Bema Camp, after registering me in the school, he took me to the post office and opened the post office savings account for me. And said, any extra money you have put in there. So even though what he was giving me was not enough, I learned to save small, small. Then I got saved. And I found out that Joseph told Pharaoh to save 20% of whatever he would get for the next seven years. So I began to save uh, I be, yes, I began to save religiously. And in the 90s, I began to learn to invest them. In Proverbs 21, 17, from the Moffat's translation, it says, a man's treatment of money is the most decisive test of his character. How he makes it 
and how he spends it. So how a man treats money is the test of his character. Now in the past, I went around this country with what I call the youth explosion. And I kept teaching the young people that they must invest. Because I was doing it. But these days, when they ask me, Bishop, how do I invest? I don't know what to say anymore. Because in those days, you knew that when you invested, in our reputable financial institutions every, every year you have 20% or 25% in, uh, you know, interest now we have eroded the confidence of investors including me because the bank of ghana can decide that you, you know the investment something and so now you have they'll give you interest free five year interest free uh, you know bond and all kinds of things. Because of failure of financial institutions. Under NDC, we saw DKM fail. And then under MPP, we've seen multiple financial institutions and fund management firms fail. Even where fund, money, fund management firms that housed provident funds, even now you're, you can't be sure that you get your provident fund. And so teaching the youth it becomes difficult to show them because the institutions are somehow the bible says in psalm 11 verse 3 if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do in the in those days you can easily tell a young man look you can do your work and invest risk-free investment there are some of the investments they are risk-free Put it in a financial house every year, it will, and then you know, you roll it over. Now, the only one left, probably that I know, is treasury bills, and uh, you can get it in the bank. There are seven pillars of every society or seven pillars that upholds every society. They are the pillars of government or politics. Economy or business. Educational academia. Family. Religion. And also sports and entertainment and then media unfortunately we have allowed politics to dominate all the other pillars for any society to succeed you need all those pillars working today almost all the decisions taken in the business and banking sector are political so no matter how suicidal the decisions are the politicians make them for us educational decisions are not made by educationists anymore but politicians and so no matter how bad it is it is made 
So we keep going from J JSS to JHS to SSS to SJSS to the mm -hmm. and we don't know where it will go next time. Say you call JHS any SSS two track, two track, three track. Maybe next time it will be four track, five track, but. We need, we need educationists to make the decisions, One track, not politicians. Medical decisions for our nation are made by politicians and not medi medical practitioners anymore. So we can all be dying as long as the decisions meet political whims and caprices. It's taken. Decisions for the family are not taken by family people who have sound or balanced homes anymore. But by politicians or celebrities. And some of these politicians have not even been able to be faithful to their spouse. Some of them have side, so many side chicks. And if they have uh, and if they are women and they have husbands they have they they've, they've made their husbands run away and left them. Some of those who take the decisions are old people who are chasing girls the age of their daughters and granddaughters. It reminds me of a joke I, I read. It says marriage can be sweet. But if you are married to the wrong person, it is like COVID-19. Every day a new case. <laughs> As a nation, we must not allow our politics to destroy our institutions. We must have just balances. And the laws of the land are supposed to do just that. Proverbs 11 verse 1 says, A false balance and unrighteous dealings are extremely offensive. They are offensive and shamefully sinful to the Lord. See, those days you go to buy meat and if you are buying 10, uh, 10 pounds or 2 kilos they will take a 2 kilo metal and put it on the scale here and then put your meat here if it's two kilos, it will balance. But if the person is wicked, he will intentionally change the scale. And that is what happens when the, when the balance is a false one. So you, you think you are buying two kilos, but you bought one and a half kilos. It, it, it's like you go to buy fuel and in the afternoon they pump a lot of foam so you think you've bought two gallons but you bought one you bought 1.2 gallons it's a false balance Leviticus 19.35 says, You shall not do unrighteousness in judgment. And the verse 36 says, You shall have accurate and just balances. So, there should not be different laws for different people. If pastors, 
who could have a church service of less than 50 people can be jailed. When other people who are not pastors go to hold functions that have more than 50 people when they are not supposed to do that. They are, they are also supposed to be jailed. But it doesn't happen like that. People, you know, we live in a time where in, in, under, under the rule of law, you are innocent until you are decla- until you are proven guilty. But now, you are guilty, or you are declared guilty, until you prove yourself innocent, which is not the rule of law. So, people can sit on air. And accuse pastors without due process. And you are pronounced guilty on TV and in the courts of public opinion. <laughs> now, normally, I don't, I don't reply to my critics and accusers. But recently, I kept getting calls all over the world that one or Botan or Blay a herbalist who, who claims to have been a fake pastor sat on a TV platform to accuse me of being fake claiming I trained Obinim so if he's Azan, then I am I am chief. <laughs> well, Jesus trained Judas. And Judas became a traitor. They didn't make Jesus a traitor. I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus. He was perfect God and perfect man. But he trained Judas. Well, I didn't train Obinim. He asked for my mentorship. And it did not work. And uh, the rest is history. You see, a good father can have a bad child. And that doesn't mean the father is bad. And for this accusation, because ministry is based on integrity, my office has reached out to the producers of the program. That the guy should produce evidence of his claims about me. Or he'd be made to retract, but nothing has been done. And so today you can be accused on TV without any legal process. We can't run this country like that. We can also politicians cannot also run the church. The church is a pillar of its own and the church must be run by religious leaders. Today, there is a lot of politicization of our civil and public service. But people, young men, must know that if you join the public service and you work for 15 years, someone from a certain party cannot just come and remove you from your position because they are a party faithful. Unfortunately, today our public and civil service are the preserve of politicians, their families, and friends. Now, 
we must not encourage people to go to school or further their education and get qualifications. And when it gets to employment, party faithfuls with less qualifications, will get the job and at times earn more than the qualified person. This 2020, we are voting again. And it must not be that after the elections, the average Ghanaian worker is afraid because of his tribal name. His tribal name will determine whether he will retain his job or not. Beloved, our politics must stop dividing us. Our politicians must stop polarizing our country. We used to be one country. In our boarding houses, we were bonded together. The Christian and the Muslim. The Ewe and the Ashanti. The Ga and the Dagbani of Frafra. The Dagaba and the Enzima, etc. All of us stayed in one dormitory or hostel. So we saw ourselves as one people. Today, our politicians see some Ghanaians as foreigners. And so, a 70 year old blind man, Mr. Christian Agbe. Agbeviade, uh, yeah, Mr. Christian Agbeviade, who had worked with the Ministry of Defense at Bema Camp for 30 years. Now, our new Defense Ministry, yeah, Juma Bess and Fishebiasa. As a civilian, and now retired to his village. Now, now, Okwa Homiji, Emu, Okot Nekura, could be harassed by security forces to prove he's a Ghanaian. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, man, before Timi Kwaha no, Etresa, Onchresa, or yeah, a Ghanaian. Because he's branded Togolese. Yes, I say, I can't say that they are too nice to say, or yeah, Togolese. When I saw the video, my stomach churned. Eh, Mula Mihu, is a yeah video no, me yafu eh eh dani. As to what our country is coming to. Apparently, this old man was the in-law of the moderator of the Global Evangelical Church. You would ask me, Bishop, is one person worth talking about this one? Yes. Honey. I left Tamale, Tamale during the Kongomba Nanumba war. Me free a year Tamale ye Nanumba Nikumba Kongomba. A spillover into Tamale because the Nanumbas, Dagombas, and Mamprusis come from one father. So if you touch one, you touch all. Some people rumored in Tamale that Rollins was supporting the Konkombes. And so in Tamale, the rumor was that the airways had sided with the concombers. So they started attacking airways. They killed two airways, put their heads on sticks. Cut off their heads, put it on sticks, paraded the streets of Tamale. Reverend Steve Manson, general overseer of charismatic evangelistic ministry, was holding a revival for me at the time and had visited my house. When some irate youth holding cutlasses and cudgels came to my gate, arguing whether to come in or not to come in. I was standing with Reverend Steve in my kitchen window 
overlooking them. And my little kids and one asked me, Daddy, are they going to come and kill mommy? Upon counsel, I had to leave Tamale to Accra. And so these things matter to me. Our politics must stop dividing us. We must stop this attitude of you are a foreigner because it does not build a nation but destroys a nation. I've been studying the history of the Rwandan war and there was a tension build up for so many years until one day it, it erupted we don't need to be piling ethnic nor tribal explosive powder under our national carpet he said bishop uh, why are you talking? I didn't know, because it could be you tomorrow. Today it is somebody else. And you'll be for fraud. It could be you tomorrow. A German Lutheran pastor named uh, named Martin Mo Nemola. Uh, yeah, German so for be a friend Martin Nemola. Speaking on the cowardice of German intellectuals. Well, Speaking on the cowardice of German intellectuals uh, yeah, German, uh, and, when when he, he, and, and certain clergy, including himself, following the Nazi rise to power. And the subsequent incremental purging of their chosen targets group after group. He said, and I quote, they came first for the communists and I did not speak up. Because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me and by that time no one was left to speak up. Unquote. And so as a people, we must not allow our institutions to be used as tools for the persecution and unjust prosecution of fellow citizens. Beloved, we live in a country you cannot criticize our politics anymore. The politicians have made it so difficult to criticize their mistakes and faults. When you do, they release their attack dogs. Who? Pounds on you through the media and social media. They would insult you, threaten you, and label you. We cannot raise issues in this country anymore. When you do, you are branded NDC or MPP depending on whose ox you have got. Currently, we do not even have any known opposition radio or television station. We do not have any known opposition or radio station. And you say, yes, radio station, we are opposition, and now say the OD is not there. And we pride ourselves we are a democracy. 
Well, an unknown author said this. For so many years, it was attributed to Edmund, Edmund Beck or Robert F. Kennedy, but the author is unknown. He said the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. So the only necessary thing for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing or say nothing. As a nation, we need people that can tell the unpleasant truth. If we build a nation of yes people, then we are doomed. We have too many sycophants who only tell leaders what they were that they were making a mistake after the leader falls. So if you knew they, they were wrong, why didn't you say it? Politicians and leaders. It is time you appreciated those who would show you your wrongs and faults. But not those who would sing your praise. Leaders on all fronts need people who will not fear your office. You need people who will not fear your office. But respectfully tell you that the king is naked. But not say, oh king, you have a nice transparent garment. Now you say that, bishop, why all these things? In Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. It says for the priest's lips, the Amplified says for the priest's lips should guard and keep pure the knowledge of my law. And the people should seek or inquire for and require instruction at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The King James says the, the, the priest's lips should have knowledge or keep knowledge. And the people must seek instruction of the law at his lips. So pastors must feed the people the bible says in the last days i'll give you pastors who will feed you with knowledge and understanding how can our prophets prophesy safety and who will win election 2020 in the face of all the challenges we are seeing some are saying nanado will win others are saying john mama will win is god confused if we start prophesying this one will win, then why don't we make them stop and then we just choose them? We as pastors must be educating the masses. Instead of prophesying the death of celebrities. For us pastors, if we don't judge ourselves, others will judge us. In First Corinthians 11 verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Pastors, it is time to judge ourselves. We can't just pretend and be ostriches and think that everything is okay. Okay. Some of our pastors think that 
whatever they say must not be subject or prophes prophesy must not be subject to scrutiny. In 1 Corinthians 14, 29, the Bible says, let two or three prophets speak. Let the others judge. So prophecy must be judged. Prophecy must be subject to scrutiny. So if you prophesy and we take you on, don't behave like a child. As a nation, we have the kind of pastors we deserve. With our desires, we have produced the kind of priests we have today. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, chapter 4, verse 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own last shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables we have a generation of itching ears so for what, what, what direction what does I go? What is God saying? And so there are so many priests and pastors who are giving directions that are not even from God. We have priests tearing families apart. With your wife or your mother or your grandmother is a witch. Instead of teaching the people how to work on their marriage. Because if God gives you even a, God gives you an angel, you have to work hard to live with the angel. Instead of pastors teaching people the principles of fasting and prayer. So that the congregation can pray for their own needs. Some pastors are saying, bring me the provisions and I will fast for you. Instead of teaching the people that God blesses hard work. And that if they don't do any work which is zero, if God blesses a thousand times you will still have zero instead they are prophesying lotto numbers what a shame to us pastors beloved we have a danger and it's a danger of unemployed Edu educated youth. For many years now, both under the NDC and MPP regimes, when you get to the traffic lights, there are young men who will be running after your car for a pittance. Not because they don't want to work but because there are no jobs for them to do. One time a national security boss said to me and I quote he said the danger in this nation is not from armed robbers and armed men but jobless educated young men and women. Unquote. We need leaders who don't eat in the morning. That is a Bible proverb. In Ecclesiastes 10 verse 16. It says, Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child. 
I say, oh, as I say, moon yes, a mohine, a yabofra, and your princes feast in the morning. Now, what this year, a didianopa. Verse 17 Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your prince and your princes feast at the proper time. I say, in Sidanamo, Mua, a yamma him for a year a titru. Princes who eat early in the morning simply means those who chop when it's not time to chop. Today we, today we are raising politicians who come into office and, bef and before they came to office, office some of them, their house the roof was leaking within four years within four years not only have they renovated the house some have bought houses some have chains of cars meanwhile before they came into office their car was a wounded one they are eating in the morning. There is a time for everything. Amen? Amen. You don't eat before your time. Beloved, for us as a nation, with what we are bequeathed, we want to bequeath to our children. Those of us who are old, we must feel guilty for allowing such things in our nation. Not only must we feel guilty, but we must repent and have a sense of moral responsibility and teach our young people to follow institutions or build with the institutions. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and repent of their wicked ways, then I will hear from the highest heaven and heal their land. It didn't just say if we would pray. But he said, if we will repent or turn from our wicked ways, may we repent. Beloved, may God bless our homeland, Ghana. May he help us, help us to make our institutions work. And help us to unite as one people for the development of this nation. God bless you.